Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. So, in this episode, we are looking at the uh, Airfix uh, Curtis P40 Warhawk in 148 scale. Um, so, in this episode, we're actually going to be looking at uh, actually a lot more than what I would probably usually do in an episode. Um, reason being actually because um, it's actually quite a quick and fairly simple build. Um, so we're going to be looking at uh, building the cockpit. Um, I haven't put, well, actually, I haven't put any detail in there apart from uh, the seatbelt uh, set I got from uh, Edard. Um, it's actually quite well detailed uh, in the first place, and also I couldn't find any good enough for me anyway, uh, or reference photos I could follow uh, to add any extra bits and pieces in. Uh, but again, like I said, to be fair, actually in the case of this one, it's actually quite well detailed and it's quite a high sided cockpit anyway. Uh, it's not something like the Spitfire where you've got the, you know, the side drop down door and um, where you can see straight into the cockpit. Um, so probably most of the detail in there you're not really going to see anyway. And of course being 48th, um, you know, it's not like a 32nd kit or, or 24th um, where you'd actually see really, really well uh, into the cockpit. Um, we're also going to be looking at actually the main build uh, of the model as well. Um, we're also going to be looking at a little bit of riveting. Um, that was interesting, uh, <laughs> admittedly. Uh, I've not actually done riveting before. Um, it didn't quite turn out quite the way I planned it, but we'll we'll get into that further in uh, to the video. So. That's pretty much all that's going to be uh, going on in the episode, so we'll just get straight into it. So I've got to say straight away, the cockpit detail is actually quite nice. Uh, so there's no real need to uh, put any extra details in. Um, but there was a few ejector pin marks uh, within there, so of course they had to be removed. So I started uh, sanding them down to rough on the surface, because next I need to put some uh, Tamiya putty in. So that's needs something good to uh, grip to and with a bit of luck we won't see those ejector pins afterwards i mean to be fair they're going to be quite deep in the cockpit it's quite high walled you probably wouldn't see them anyway but it's best just to get rid of these things uh, just in case the only thing that really had to be added in uh, here was uh, the machine guns uh, which you only see uh, the back of so you've got the back firing block there the cockpit is actually designed uh, as a singular sort of unit to put in, but I decided to do it my way, uh, which doesn't work out too well uh, later on, which we'll see uh, in a bit. So very quickly moving on to uh, painting the cockpit. I've based it in a silver, and then uh, I'll put a bit of uh, AK chipping solution in, and then um, on top of that I'll put um, mix of Tamiya olive drab uh, and some uh, yellow just to lighten uh, the colour because uh, I didn't want it too dark um, and didn't really want to go for the really you know sort of luminescent yellow uh, these sometimes are but going through some of the reference photos I found it was sort of this sort of light olive drab colour. I did also repeat the same process throughout so the cockpit walls as well as the seat were all done with it in the same um, process. Now for the chipping uh, all you need is some tap water and a bit of a old uh, stiff brush and just very gently um, work your way uh, at the paint. Uh, you don't want to go too hard because you start taking uh, too much of the paint off. Um, you know you're better off working um, just in little bits because uh, it says you don't, it, well it, I suppose it depends on the look that you're going for um, I kind of wanted to sort of go for, a, you know, fairly chipped and warm, but not somewhat not too heavy. Um, so it's best just to do it in, in just little bits and pieces, um, you know, take a look at it and see what you think. And if you want to do a bit more, obviously go a bit more. If not, obviously just leave it as it is. It's also the same for the seat. Um, so hitting those uh, sort of what I'm calling high touch points. Um, so like the edge of the seat, the lip, uh, the front of the seat, and of course the pan of the seat as well, which of course this parachute will sit. It's got a lot of buttons and buckles on there, so of course that's going to get quite highly scuffed 
as well. I also did the same uh, for the uh, rudder pedals as well, because of course they're going to get knocked uh, continuously. Um, so again, that's going to be a part that's probably not really going to be seen anyway, but it's just one of the things that's just probably best to do um, as well. Now, if you want to do some scratching, uh, it's very easy. Again, just, just a little bit of water uh, on that part and with something like a needle or a pin or something like that, something quite sharp and just very gently, um, you know, just scuff and scratch away um, at the paint. And again, if you've put a fairly light layer on, it comes off really nicely and not in really big, thick chunks. So I decided not to really worry too much about using the decals because again, I'm 100% sure you're not really going to see much of this anyway. Um, but just to give it a bit of a worn look and just pronounce the detail, just dry brushed uh, a little bit of white or preferably sort of like an off-white or a really light grey colour. So next we start moving on to sort of building uh, some of the sort of internal parts. Um, I later found out this part of the radiator um, actually sits too far forward. Didn't realise this until actually pretty much completed uh, putting the fuselage together. So I had to try and break that away and pull it back and glue that into the right position. So, you know, in the instructions, it's kind of not quite right. Um, but the cockpit in general, it fits in relatively well. I had to take a few of the uh, notches out or widen the notches a little bit further uh, to fit the, uh, the framing uh, on the wall. So the last thing to do is to put the uh, centre console uh, in, in the right position, because again, this was supposed to be built as one unit. So of course, I did it my way. Next time, I will do it the proper way, because uh, you can see here, it doesn't quite fit uh, very well. Now, I'm presuming this is my fault and not um, the way Airfix has uh, designed it. Um, so it took quite a while uh, to get this to sit right. And even still, um, there was quite a step um, in the two halves. So that's going to take a bit of sanding um, to get all that right and smooth and, you know, look right. So you can see here is my biggest problem was uh, closer to the front uh, of the uh, canopy. It come away a little bit so the plastic had, had sort of spread. As you can see, it doesn't look uh, nice at all. Uh, so it takes a heavy bit of sanding um, to try and sort of take the initial step out and smooth it out. Um, and also again, give something uh, for the uh, putty to stick to. Now also I got a bit excited and forgot I'd actually bought some seat belts uh, for this to go in. Uh, these are Edo's, uh, already, obviously you can see already uh, photo etched um, parts. Uh, fortunately the kit comes with two seats so I used obviously the one I wasn't using. Uh, just to bend uh, the belts into the right place and fortunately So now we start to sand uh, that nasty um, seam away. Um, it take, took me quite a while uh, to get this right. And you know, it's not one of my favorite parts uh, of modeling, trying to get rid of seam lines, particularly as much as a cock up of I've made uh, of this. So it took uh, considerably a long time to rectify it. So 
So while that's putty's drying, uh, I'm going to add in uh, the two top panels uh, on the model. For some reason, these weren't made as a singular part. I'm not quite understanding why. Um, so I had to take these uh, two bracings out uh, to fit the top panels in. Uh, and to be fair, they fit quite well. Um, generally, the fit so far has actually been uh, quite reasonable um, and you know, nothing to really uh, worry too much about. Uh, but uh, the panel on the other side, I think it was, again, that was partly my fault. Um, I didn't stick it in uh, very well. So again, later on, I had to do a little bit sanding um, on the port side towards the front uh, of the nose. Now again, as always, and I will say this, I won't make it one of my models if I didn't have to make things more difficult for myself. I decided to do a bit of riveting. So as you can see, I managed to get a printout uh, of the aircraft and they're just about the right size. It's a little bit off, um, but nothing too much to worry about. Um, I also thought it'd be easier to uh, cut out each section uh, that it was going to be uh, riveting, put it over the model and use my riveting tool uh, and just follow uh, the guidelines. What I didn't think about was the fact that the teeth uh, for this sort of uh, riveting is quite small and they're not very long and trying to put that through paper um, it didn't quite work um, very well uh, so I did have to go over it a couple of times. To be fair to be more accurate you wouldn't probably really see the riveting in this scale anyway but at the same time it is quite a nice add um, but again, most of it didn't quite go through very well, so you only see a few of the riveting lines, which again, on the real thing, you know, with the paint as well, you will see some of the riveting, but not all of it. So with a bit of luck, when we get around to painting it, um, it will look, I'm hoping, right, and also look pretty good as well. So I'm sure you can see there, you can just about see some of that uh, riveting. Actually, this was the best bit of riveting uh, that come out across the nose. You can see, you can just faintly see some of the ones in the fuselage. Now to put on the lower uh, wings. These, again, fitted generally quite well. Um, it was actually more towards uh, the back. There's a little bit of a gap, uh, which was quite easily uh, dealt with uh, later on. Then, of course, the top wings were put on but for some reason there was quite a large uh, gap um, between the front wing root um, and again I think that's partly down to actually the, the build uh, of the model and not actually myself for once. Next is to put in uh, the uh, cockpit glass. Um, I did realise a bit later on that actually I don't need to put these in just yet because the one I'm painting this on actually has a camo scheme and actually runs uh, through actually that part of the cockpit. So I'm gonna to have to remove those uh, later on. So there we go, guys. That's basically the model all done. Um, as I said before, um, at the start of the video, uh, that riveting uh, was, it didn't really go down quite the way I uh, expected it to go down. Uh, Says I've never done riveting before. Uh, so it's a bit of a new experience for me. Um, maybe next time I actually might actually draw out uh, the rivet lines actually onto the model. Um, the teeth for this that I use, because they're only going to be small rivet lines anyway, um, they were quite shallow and trying to get through that paper um, didn't quite work out uh, very well. In some cases, particularly when I did the fuselage, I'd put a bit of uh, double sided sticky tape which made it even thicker uh, for it to go through. Um, so struggle a little bit but you know we all live and learn uh, but I mean you know you don't see them uh, very well anyway even on the real thing you know caked in paint um, and fairer in the scale you probably won't really see them I don't think anyway so but there we go um, it says we live and learn um, so uh, next episode we'll actually be looking at uh, we'll definitely be looking at painting it and to be fair it's probably gonna be, it's gonna be quite a short episode that on its own so we'll probably look at finishing it as well. So this is probably only going to be a two-part uh, series. So it's going to be nice, short and sweet. Uh, we can move quickly on to something else uh, after that. Um, so all I just have to say is um, thanks very much uh, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you're new here, please give us uh, a like and subscribe. Uh, any comments, good or bad, whatever, um, pop in the comment section below. I'll get back to you uh, on those. And again, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you again soon.